Hi, my name is Mark Son. I'm the minister at the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey, and I would like to welcome you to our evening services for Sunday, April the 17th. We will sing a few songs. We will uh, uh, have the Lord's Supper, and I will have a message uh, for you that I hope will be uh, enlightening, useful, and something that you can perhaps meditate upon. We are singing from the songbook, Songs of Faith and Praise. And so if you have that book, turn to the number that I give you. But if you don't, I will give you the title first and you can get on your device and Google it and uh, uh, get the song so that you can sing along with us if you wish to. The first song that we'll sing this evening is number 97. The title of this song is I Sing Praises. Actually, the, the first line of the song is, I sing praises to your name. 97, I sing praises. <clears throat> I sing praises to your name, O oh Lord. Praises to your name, O oh Lord. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name, O Lord. Praises to your name, O Lord. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give glory to your name, O Lord. Glory to your name, O Lord. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give glory to your name, O Lord. Glory to your name, O Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. The next song is number 578. The title is, We Will Glorify. The first line of the song is, We will glorify the King of Kings. Number 578, We will glorify. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the great I Am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before his throne. We will worship him in righteousness. We will worship him alone. He is Lord of heaven, Lord of earth. He is Lord of all who live. He is Lord above the universe. All praise to him we give. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords, who is the Great I Am. And before we uh, partake of the Lord's Supper, uh, let's turn our song books to number 335. The title is In Memory of the Savior's Love. In Memory of the Savior's Love. Number 335. <clears throat> 
in memory of the Savior's love, we keep the sacred feast, where every humble, contrite heart is made a welcome guest. By faith we take the bread of life with which our souls are fed. The cup in token of his blood that was for sinners shed. Beneath his banner thus we sing the wonders of his love. And here anticipate by faith the heavenly feast of The song is a perfect segue into the Lord's Supper. As we uh, read the words, we're doing this in memory of the Savior's love. And it is indeed a sacred feast. It's a feast that revolves around the, the cruel death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so uh, when we do gather, as we have been instructed biblically to do on the first day of the week to break bread, uh, we remember that we're doing this in the memory of the Savior's love. That's why we keep this sacred feast. And each part of the Lord's Supper is special to us. For example, the second verse says, By faith we take the bread of life with which our souls are fed. and makes a comparison to the physical bread that we take into our bodies to nourish our bodies. But the, uh, the, the bread that we take during the Lord's Supper is a spiritual bread. And this is feeding our souls this is feeding our spiritual selves. And secondly, it says the cup is in token of his blood that was for sinners shed. We know that the life-giving blood uh, of Jesus is exactly that. And it is the blood that washes away our sins. So we take this in token, uh, we, this cup in token of the Savior's blood that for us sinners, this was shed. So as we think of the song, but moreover, we think of this, this holy institution that we call communion or the Lord's Supper, let's just remember what it is all about. It is about the death of our Savior. It is about his body and his blood. Let's pray for the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful that we can gather about your table. We're grateful that in your divine plan, you chose to send Jesus to us, that he lived as a human and he died physically as a human. We thank you that we can be spiritually fed by the spiritual bread of his body. Bless us, we partake. We pray it in his most holy name. Amen. pray for the cup. We continue our prayer, dear God, and uh, we understand that this cup is in token of his blood. And so as we drink this in, help us to remember that Jesus shed his life-giving blood. And this blood is, is so important to us because it is the blood that washes away our sins. We're just so grateful that Jesus made this sacrifice. And as we partake of the cup, help us to remember him and that uh, he gave himself for each one of us. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen.
And on the first day of the week, we are taught to lay by in store to give back to the Lord that which we have been prospered. Uh, we have been prospered so greatly. And I just uh, pray that uh, each day we will remember the wonderful gifts that you uh, gave to us, uh, even those intangible things that we can look at and we can see. Uh, I pray that you will bless us in our giving, help us to give with uh, an open heart and help us to give understanding that uh, these gifts will be used the way they should be used. Let's pray. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that we would be just stewards of what you have entrusted us. We pray that our church will be a vehicle for benevolence, that will be a vehicle for evangelism, that uh, the monies that we take in from this offering will be used to further your work, that these offerings will be used to help people who are in need. Bless us as we give. We pray it in his most holy name. Amen. And if you would turn your songs, song books to number 23. <clears throat> Let's sing. Uh, oh, the name of the song is Our God, He is Alive. Number 23, Our God, He is Alive. Let's sing the four verses and then save the chorus for the end. Okay? We'll sing uh, all four verses and then save the chorus for the end. Number 23, Our God, He is Alive. There is beyond the azure blue a God concealed from human sight. He tinted skies with heavenly view and framed the worlds with his great might. There was a long, long time ago a God whose voice the prophets heard. He is the God that we should know, who speaks from his inspired word. Secure his life from mortal mind. God holds the germ within his hand. Though men may search, they cannot find. For God alone does understand. Our God, whose son upon a tree, alive was willing there to give, that he from sin might set men free, and evermore with him could live. There is a God, he is alive, in him we live and we survive. From dust our God, created man, he is our God, the great I am. I hope that many of you sang along with us. And I know that I was lifted up by the singing of the songs. And uh, I hope that um, the Lord accepted uh, the songs as they were meant as, uh, as praises to his name. So uh, thank you for singing. Uh, we're so glad that we have that vehicle by which to uh, glorify our God. So if you were there this morning, uh, you heard me tell you that uh, the lesson uh, this evening would be entitled Traces of God. Traces of God. I took the liberty to go into the dictionary to find out what a trace is. <laughs> uh, not that we don't know already, but uh, I want to give the definition. I'm going to come back to the definition a couple of times when I use the scripture of the evening also. And so 
uh, the dictionary, and, and by the way, trace is a multifaceted word, but the, the definition that we are looking at is this, a visible mark or sign. Let's remember those two, a mark or sign, a visible mark or sign of the former presence or passage of a person, thing, or an event. Okay, I'm just going to read that one time because I am going to, I am going to come back to it. And if you do have your Bibles or your devices, if you would turn to the book of Romans in the very, very first chapter, uh, Romans chapter 1, and we are going to look at verse 20. Romans chapter 1, verse 20. Now, last week, I preached a sermon in the morning uh, uh, worship service that uh, was entitled, Great are the Gifts of God. Uh, this lesson will kind of be a segue off of last Sunday morning's uh, main lesson. All right, are you at Romans chapter 1, verse 20? It reads, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Now let's go back to our a dictionary definition of trace, and you'll see where the title of my lesson is going to this evening. A visible mark or sign of the former presence or passage of a person, thing, or event. I would contend to you this evening that everywhere in God's creation are traces of God himself. Traces of God. And if we look at the definition, a visible mark or sign, God has not left himself without marks or signs to let us know that he has been here. So, so telling are these tokens of his creativity that we can hardly come in contact with anything, anything that God has done without being reminded of the power of his existence, and the richness of his love. Now, remember the scripture. Okay, remember, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen. Now, you know what? What, is a, what does a trace mean to you? Let's, uh, let's put it down in everyday terms. I've, I've always been an anecdote teacher. Um, and uh, I guess I, I won't ever stop. Uh, so let's look at our lives and see what a trace means. Have you ever heard the term, where there's smoke, there's fire? We know what that means, don't we? Have you ever gone out of your house and kind of sniffed a little bit and you smell that something was burning? And you know what? There are different kinds of burning that give off different kind of odors. Our cars give off an exhaust. Hopefully it's not too harsh, but we don't hold our noses or mouths over the exhaust pipes of our cars because they are odors that remind us that a fuel is being burned. A, uh, hydrocarbon fuel that is being burned. And so the trace of that is the odor. I know sometimes during the wintertime, 
uh, dotted around my neighborhood are a few people that have fireplaces. And there is that unmistakable trace of the wood burning. And so whether it's odors, how about sounds? How about a, a train whistle? What does that remind us of? There's a train coming. We live in our particular house, right up over my head where I am right now, over one of the flight patterns for the Atlantic City Airport in uh, Pomona, New Jersey. And I can tell from a distance away when a plane is going to come over. And I can tell how big the plane is because it leaves its traces through its sound. Bigger planes tend to make bigger sounds. And by the way, almost every day, the Coast Guard, which is located not far from us, uh, has a red helicopter that flies overhead. And I know that trace also. Our tastes tell us that something might be sour or sweet or bland. And so with that in mind, let's use those physical traces, whether they come from our, our olfactories, from our vision, from sounds and tastes, and, and segue this into the lesson. And so let's first understand that one of the great traces of God is his very existence. God is real. Now, we don't see God as a figure. We've heard over and over again, he's not some old guy in the sky. But God is real. And so we know he is in existence, and we see that as we marvel what he's left behind. The things that he has left behind. If we, if we fail to see this truth, it's not because he has not made it plain to us. Let's look at the first part of our scripture in Romans chapter 1, verse 20. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen. All right. God is physically invisible, but the traces he have, has left of himself are not invisible. And so we are without excuse, but that things that have been created have been created by our God. And, and the wonderful thing is that we, human beings, are the only entity that are mentioned in our Bibles that are created in the image of God. That's really, really important. We, each of us, are created in God's image. Now, we're real and we're flesh and blood. And so that does not mean that God looks like me, perish the thought. But on a spiritual level, what do we say when we tell someone we're trying to live a godly life? What do we say when we're trying to live a righteous life? What do we say when we want to be more Christ-like in the things that we say, and the things that we do. What does it say about us when we take that wonderful scripture that Jesus said, I came not into this world to, to be served, but to serve. That when we serve, we take on one of the attributes of Jesus Christ, our Savior. His invisible attributes are clearly seen. There are traces of these. And the traces are very, very tangible. Remember the dictionary definition. They are visible marks and they are visible signs. So number one, we are reminded one trace of God is noticed by us through his very existence. 
Second, we have the understanding of God's benevolence and beauty, right? His benevolence and his beauty. It's important for us to recognize the traces of God's existence. But wait a minute. It's even more important for us. It's even more important for us to see what the creation says about God's nature. Just as surely as any work of art has revealed the heart of the artist. Isn't that what takes place? Now, most of us cannot do that. Maybe you have some artistic talents, but that an artist can take what he sees and put it on a canvas is what God does for us. God in his creation has put it all on a canvas. Do you love poetry? I know people that write poetry. I used to write poetry. I uh, don't do it much anymore. But, uh, oh, and by the way, April is National Poetry Month. Just wanted to remind you of that. Uh, my good friend Dave sent me a, uh, a card reminding me of that. And on the back of the card, it had perhaps one of my very fav favorite poems. The poet is Robert Frost. And if I could, for just a moment, let me recite this poem. And if you know anything about poems, you know what poem it is. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry, I could not travel both. And be one traveler, long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other, as just as fair, but having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for the passing there, had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh. Somewhere ages and ages hence, Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. You can dissect that poem. You can read it and meditate on it and find so much meaning in it. Frost turned a poem into almost a way in philosophy of life. It's what poets do, and it's what artists do, and this is what God did in his universe. He left traces of himself all over the place. A world like the one that we live in could not have been made by a God who did not, I guess, have a, a delight in beauty and enjoy. And by the way, even a sense of humor. We see the majestic Alps and in our own country, we see the Grand Canyon. We go to the uh, state parks, to, to Yellowstone, or we go to the parks in Utah. We go to Arches or Zion or Bryce, and we see the majesty 
of our God and we see the majesty of his creation and we wonder, wow, God presented this to all of us. It's no wonder in wisdom of certain men that we preserve these places so people can visit them and see, see the glory of what God created. If you like horses, the magnificent horses that people ride on. If you're a dog lover and you have a faithful dog as a companion or a cat, and if we see the, the cows from whom we get milk that we drink as a nourishment for us, all of these were God's creation. And his sense of humor? God created the Venus flytrap, a plant that eats insects. God created the duckbill platypus and the kangaroo, some strange, strange looking animals but they are evidence of God's existence. God left traces of himself everywhere in our universe and more closely to me, everywhere in my world, I can see the traces. As the definition said, I can see the marks or signs that there is an existent God and he's a God of benevolence and a God of beauty. And so what's our job here in this world? Our purpose, our purpose as vessels is to receive God's joy, surrounded by so many wonderful traces of God. How can we look and see the wonders of the world and miss what these wonders say about us? The fact that we had the ability and what I had done already this evening to, to meditate rationally on these things and appreciate their significance ought to persuade us that we were made for something more than mere existence. We're made for things more, for something more than mere existence. We were made to be God's receptacles. But uh, to do that, we have to be the vessel into which God can pour his delight that uh, our Father wishes to pour that delight into us. So as we look about us and we see the traces, help us to just remember that we have such a great God and he undeniably existed, and he existed uh, such that uh, he transcended anything that we can really understand, and he is benevolent, and he gave us a beautiful a world. There is a Gaelic prayer that I would like to share with you. It says, as the hand is made for holding and the eye for seeing, you have fashioned me for joy. Share with me the vision that I shall find it everywhere in the wild violet's beauty, in the lark's melody, in the face of a steadfast man, in a child's smile, in a mother's love, and in the purity of Jesus. Yes, the purity of, a G of Jesus is a trace of God that he left for us so that that would enter into us as his vessels that he wishes to pour his very delight into. I hope this lesson was a, an informative and an uplifting one. Uh, the wonderful thing that God gave to us is that through his son that we can achieve salvation. That uh, uh, when we think of the day that today is that the world celebrates Easter Sunday, we think of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and we know that we will one day be resurrected if we come to the Lord in obedience and obey his will into salvation. 
And so as I finish this lesson and as we look about us and we see the, the traces and the wonders of God, the real wonder of God is that he's created a spiritual place for us to spend eternity, which is what should be our goal in our life. So if you have not accepted Jesus into your life, uh, if you know and if you've read and, uh, or have been taught uh, that you know uh, that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and you confess that, if you say, I don't want to live this life that I lived before and, and repent of what you have done and you've been, ba and been baptized into the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, that invitation is open to you this evening. If you need to come to the Lord, uh, it is the time and we are ready and available to help you. And I pray that if that is something that you need to do, please do so. Let's all pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the beauty of your earth. Uh, I pray that uh, you have uh, allowed us through this message uh, to see uh, that since creation, that uh, you have left your traces that you have left your marks and your signs. And we, look, we can look about us and we can see your existence. We can look about us and we can see your benevolence and we can see your beauty reflect in what you've given to us. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, as Christians, to know that the greatest beauty is to live a Christ-like life and to live godly lives, to be your servants and to do your will in our lives. I pray that you would bless us, comfort us when we need comforting. Help us indeed to be helpmates to others. Help us to rejoice with those that rejoice and help us to, uh, help us to uh, mourn with those that mourn. Help us to look at things that we can do to encourage one another toward love and good deeds in our lives as we live our life one day at a time. Bless us and be with us. I pray that uh, you would continue uh, to shed your blessings upon us as we look at your wonderful creation and stand in awe. We pray this prayer in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all.